Hey everyone, this is Suzanne from Glass Garden Beads. I am here to hopefully give you a very short introduction into a kit we've had forever. It's it's a legacy kit. And what makes our kits a legacy kit is if they're over uh, 15 to 20 years old. And this one certainly is. This is the Blooming Crystal. We've had it on the shelf for a while, um, getting all this crystal organized and um, I decided to bring it back with some embellishments. Now, the Blooming Crystal was originally designed and and owns the design is Susan Manchester here from Minnesota. And it's been a wonderful kit to Glass Garden Beads. And so thank you, Susan, for coming up with this beautiful kit. Now, it holds 15 blooms, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Uh, nothing has changed with the construction of the Blooming Crystal, but what I did change, I call it a new do, a new hairdo. Hence, do you see the new hairdo? Um, <clears throat> anyway, it's got 15 blooms, there's six colors of crystal, and eight colors of seed beads that I'm mixing with this. And then the center are all three millimeter pearls, uh, pearl crystals, okay? Now, all the crystals are the Australian Premier Crystal. And then we have fire polish, four millimeter fire polish, that's the base. So I'm gonna go into showing you what I did. We're calling it Summer Circus. That should tell you something right there. So I'm gonna turn this camera around, hopefully I can and um hey i'm back i'm going to try to gently put this down so we can see of course i had to connect it and you saw i couldn't get back on my original so i'll, I'll link them all together so hold on we're getting there we're getting there i know everybody else is so good with this and i kind of still struggle okay here we are, and there's still a shadow. Here's the eight seed beads. Here's the, the six color crystal. And when I said we make 15 blooms, this is what it is. I put all 15 on, on here, and it makes a, um, I believe it's a seven and a half inch length. So the reason I wanna quickly say, I can't give you any more crystals for a nine inch bracelet, but what I can do is you've got extra seed beads here. You can do loops to extend it. And then this button will fit into one of those loops and you can get your extension, okay? But right now, here it is. Here's our summer circus. And you can see I didn't finish all of this yet because I want to show you, this is really the start of a Russian leaf, okay? But I did very, very few because I wanted them a little more petite. I do this last. You can kind of um, put in whatever color you want. I did leave some choices up to you. You can, there's obviously gonna be a picture in your directions to show you what I did do if you wanna follow it that way. Or you can choose, you know, if you don't like the blue with the lime or the periwinkle blue with the lime and you want orange, you put it in there. The directions will show you how to place the beads, but you can decide where you place your color. And that's what's so fun about this. I, I didn't change any patterning, which I promised Susan I would never do. The patterning is Blooming Crystal by Susan Manchester. The leaf embellishments are something I added, but it does not change the base design of this bracelet, okay? The base is four millimeter fire polish done in your right angle weave, eight beads. The, the directions are very clear, okay? So right now, I am going to take you through a couple of things. I when you, I extend my leaf from the crystal base, not the fire polish base, the crystal base. So if the thread is coming out of, let's call it the four o'clock crystal, it's going to, and it's pointing this way, the hole is pointing that way, that is how your leaf is going to point. 
on this side, the crystal's pointing this way, and I put and I come out the base of the hole of the crystal, that's how your leaf is going to point. So I've tried to kind of give them some altering. Now, some crystals will have two leaves coming out of them. Some crystals might have this crystal with one leaf and this crystal with another, and then we decide to come up here. So it's, it's gonna be, once you start working with it, you will get to decide how you wanna do it. Now, my next leaf, this is, um, Providence Lavender, Light Lavender, and I've just finished this leaf, okay? And I'm obviously when you go through it, your thread pattern goes right to the top of that crystal. So what I'm gonna do is I want to move my thread so it's coming out this crystal over here. What do you do? Well, you've got your seed beads on top, so I am going to literally go through two of the top seed beads. Okay, I'm moving the thread. So many p times people get all wigged up about moving that thread. That just means you're moving your thread to where you want it to come out and exit. I want it to come out of this crystal down here. I think I would call it the seven o'clock crystal or the one o'clock if you're looking at it up and down. And um, managing your thread is a bit of an issue. So just kind of take your time. You can see I got it stuck. So I'm gonna pull it through and the colors I want to use on this, I just had orange up here, but I think I'm going to do a um, orange and green. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go into my packets, and I've got the color name. This is unusual, too. I've got the color name on top of the bag, so if you ever need to go out or you need more, you just give me a call. We do things very well here, and we have this color green. Okay, I love this because number one, it's it's a bit uh, gaudy. <laughs> it's fun. It's it's whimsical looking, but the color is so much fun and it's perfect for summer. And as I did this, I pulled my needle right off my thread. So uh, give me a second here to. Have you ever seen me get through a video without something going on? Okay, and I did it again. You know, you guys are watching me. Turn your heads for a minute. <laughs> Easier said than done. Plus, crystal is a hard thing to thread. You can hardly see it unless you have maybe a black mat um, <clears throat> behind you. I got. I think I got it. Okay, just don't move it too much there. Ta-da, we got it. Okay, so... To, and this will be in your direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the spine of this. And you start with my, um, <clears throat> my accent color is orange. So I'm gonna do one orange. Then I'm gonna do five of the body color. Okay, five body color. And then I do an orange and a body color. And I strand that all on coming out of that crystal. You see that? Okay, that's the direction it's gonna kind of lay. So now when I come back, I'm gonna turn this just for working. When I come back, I am going to count up three beads, and then I'm gonna go th through the fourth bead, right here, just one bead, and I'm gonna pull it. Now this is important. I'm gonna pull it, it's, it's putsy, but it's important. I want this tight. I want it tight up in here, from here to here. So kind of get your fingernail in there, pull it. It's gonna loosen up a little bit. So meanwhile, that's what your end should look like. You've got the pointy and then the two beads, and you're doing peyote. So we're coming out of our fourth bead we're adding a bead, which is going to stay on top of the fifth bead, and we're going to go out the next bead. So it's kind of like add a bead, skip a bead, which is the peyote mantra. Okay, holding the whole thing in my hand, I'm still pulling. See that? I'm still pulling to keep it as close as I can to that crystal here. I'm going to add another bead. Okay, and I'm going to come out the orange this time. Okay, 
So I've got, this is how it looks before I do my turnaround, okay? Now, I like to turn around with the colors. So it's gonna be kind of two colors on top. You'll see how that leaf is, okay? So I'm gonna take another orange, <clears throat> and I'm gonna come back down through one of the beads. I'm just turning around. I'm not adding a bead other than the orange. And it's going to look like that. Okay. But now I'm going to fill in and I'm going to fill in with orange. So I pick up an orange and I go through. This is coming back still. It's called the fill in of the peyote. Still peyote. And I got to get this untied here. Did I get it in? Oh yeah, I got it right around the whole thing. Okay. Pull it. So here's my start of my accents. You see that? Okay. Another orange. And you want to keep it straight so you don't twist it. So I'm straightening it out. And I know I have to go through this bead. So when I add the orange, I go through the last green bead, the last bead of the leaf or the main color. Okay. So I've done one side, right? But I want to come back and do this side. So all I'm doing is taking the needle and thread and I'm getting it where I want it. I go through the top, which we would call a pico, or the point of the leaf. And I am notorious for getting this thread. There we go. Okay. Now I'm coming back and I'm gonna go, I'm not adding a bead yet. I'm going down and I'm going to go through that next bead on the other side. And then we're gonna fill in two accent beads. An orange bead will go there, an orange bead will go there, and we've completed the leaf. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around so I can, don't get all twisted. Am I on camera? Yeah, I'm still on camera. And I'm going to go down the next one, and I'm going to go through the green, and I'm going to go through the orange, because it's right on top of there. Okay, and I have completed that leaf. See how it lays? Just put it down here. That leaf lays, it's coming out this way, it lays pointing that way, which is where the base of that hole is. Now, I am going to go back and I want to now come out of this side. How do you do that? Well, here's how I do it. I come up the crystal, the same crystal I used. Get that thread out so you're not, and see, I pull tight. I want to be over here. So all I'm gonna do is go through one seed bead, just almost like we were doing the, the top stitches. And I pulled out my needle. I am something to behold here. All right. Okay, I had to edit, or I had to edit a little bit with, because it took me so long to get my needle threaded. But if you recall, I'm coming up that crystal that I was working on, and I went through the top seed bead, and now I'm going to go down the next crystal. And to me, I've worked this out. I don't know how you want to do it, but right now I'm coming through the bottom crystal, and I'm turning this over. Okay? So when I turn it over, the closest fire polish I have is down here. Okay, so I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to turn this back. I'm now on the second, you know, this bloom, I'm on this bloom's base. So now I can go up the closest crystal base, kind of get this leaf out of here, because all I'm doing right now is moving my thread to where I want it to come out. Sally just walked in, so if you hear somebody walking around in here, it's my teaching person for a group we've got coming in. She's also my stitcher, and I'm just trying to get this thread in. All right, come on. It's really not this hard. It's just going, yeah, going up that bead from the bottom up. Okay, so I'm up here. And I want, my, I want my thread to come out this one. So it's really not too hard. You just kind of wind it around. I'm going to go through 
one bead it looks like, not two, because I want to be very close. I'll show you, I'll go through one bead. Sometimes you go through two beads, sometimes you go through three. It depends on where you want to move your thread. And now I'm going to come down the crystal I want, because remember, I'm doing my leaves from the base of that crystal. And I'm all ready to start my next leaf. And yet I'll pick out my colors, but I'm not gonna do it here because the video did show you how to do your leaves. I'm gonna finish it up today, launch it, and you'll be able to get the summer circus. Thanks a lot for listening and putting up with all my antics. Have a good day.